man once named as a person of interest in young Dolph's murder has now also been killed. In the years since the untimely passing of young Dolph, the authorities have been working tirelessly to bring his killers to justice. And now it appears that one of the men involved has met his end. Joshua Taylor, a man who was earlier named as a person of interest in the young Dolph case has been found dead. Cause of death, murder. In this video, I will be doing a deep dive into how young Dolph's suspended killers got killed and explaining what this means for the case. The death of Joshua Taylor, justice or unrelated. As the investigation into Young Dolph's murder unfolded, authorities began to piece together the puzzle of the events leading up to that tragic day. One name that emerged in their search for answers was Joshua Taylor. Joshua Taylor, also known by his alias CEO TZ, was thrust into the spotlight when he was named as a person of interest in the murder of Young Dolph. To fully understand the role that Joshua Taylor played in the murder and subsequent investigation, one must travel back in time to the beginning of the police investigation. As the news of Young Dolph's murder spread like wildfire, law enforcement agencies swiftly launched an investigation into the murder determined to bring the perpetrators to justice. The initial stages of the investigation were marked by a flurry of activity as detectives combed through the crime scene, gathering crucial evidence that would later prove vital in identifying the suspects. Authorities wasted no time in identifying one of the suspects responsible for the murder. On January 5th, 2022, the police announced that they had identified 23-year-old Justin Johnson as a suspect in the case. Johnson, also known by his rap alias Straight Drop, had a history of criminal charges and violence, as well as alleged ties to organized criminal gangs. The identification of Justin Johnson led to the issuance of a first-degree murder warrant for his arrest. Tennessee authorities, recognizing the urgency of the situation, offered a reward of up to $15,000 for any information that could lead to the capture of the suspect. This reward served as an incentive for the community to come forward with any relevant information, hoping to aid the investigation and bring justice to young Dolph's grieving family. Meanwhile, the investigation took a significant turn when another suspect, 32-year-old Cornelia Smith, was arrested on January 11th. Smith was not directly linked to the murder itself, but was apprehended for the theft of the car used in Dolph's murder. This arrest shed light on the intricate web of events surrounding the tragic incident, raising questions about the motive and the individuals involved. The swift action action of law enforcement led to a breakthrough in the case. Acting on over 500 tips received from the public, the police were able to capture Justin Johnson in Indiana, just days after Cornelia Smith's arrest. Johnson's arrest marked a significant milestone in the investigation, bringing the authorities one step closer to unraveling the truth behind Young Dolph's murder. As the investigation progressed, another individual, 27-year-old Shundale Barnett, was taken into custody. Barnett was a passenger in the vehicle driven by Justin Johnson at the time of his arrest. While not directly involved in the murder itself, Barnett faced charges of being an after-the-fact accessory, suggesting a potential role in aiding the suspects after the crime was committed. The initial phase of the investigation was marked by a relentless pursuit of justice, with law enforcement leaving no stone unturned in their quest to uncover the truth. The identification of suspects, the issue of warrants and the subsequent arrest set the stage for a complex legal battle that would captivate the nation. With the suspects in custody, the legal proceedings surrounding the murder of young Dolph began to unfold. However, the path to justice was not without its challenges and complexities. Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith, the two main suspects in the case, found themselves facing a daunting legal battle. As the severity of the charges weighed heavily upon them, they struggled to secure legal representation. Recognizing the importance of a fair trial, Judge Lee Coffey issued issued an ultimatum to the suspects. He stated, if you have a lawyer hired, that's fine. But as I told you 10 days ago, I cannot allow you to sit in jail week after week, month after month without a lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer hired on February 4th, I'm going to hire a private attorney to represent both of you all. The pressure was mounting as the deadline approached. Justin Johnson appeared in court again on February 7th, facing additional charges of violating a sex offender registration charge. Reports revealed that he had a prior conviction for aggravated rape in 2015, further complicating his legal situation. Claiming financial constraints, Johnson expressed his inability to afford legal representation, adding another layer of complexity to the case. On February 11th, both Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith pleaded not guilty to the charges of first-degree murder. The courtroom was filled with tension as the suspects maintained their innocence, setting the stage for a high-stakes trial that would captivate the nation. As the investigation continued, a shocking development emerged. Three months after the murder of young Dolph, the Memphis Police Department identified Joshua Taylor as a person of interest in the case. Taylor, a father of two, found himself at the center of a storm of speculation and suspicion. The community watched with bated breath as the investigation unfolded. While he was never directly
directly charged in connection with Young Dolph's murder, it is believed that Taylor was a friend of Justin Johnson, one of the two individuals who have been charged in Young Dolph's killing. The connection between Taylor and Johnson raised eyebrows and fueled speculation about their involvement in the crime. When Taylor's name came into the picture, investigators were keen to uncover any potential information he might have had regarding the events leading up to that fateful day. Taylor's alleged involvement in the Young Dolph case raised numerous questions. Did he have knowledge of the circumstances surrounding the murder? What was his connection to the individuals responsible for Young Dolph's untimely demise? These questions lingered in the minds of investigators and the public alike. Taylor's status as a person of interest made him a key figure in the investigation, and authorities hoped that he could provide valuable insights into the case. The alleged ties between Taylor and the suspects charged in connection with Young Dolph's murder have sent shockwaves through the community. Many wonder what role Taylor may have played in the events that unfolded on that fateful day outside the South Memphis cookie store. Was he an accomplice? Did he have knowledge of the planned attack? These questions continue to haunt those seeking justice for Young Dolph. It is important to note that Taylor's alleged involvement in the Young Dolph case is not the only connection he had to criminal activities. He was wanted on charges of theft of property between $10,000 and $60,000, as well as possession of a prohibited weapon. These additional charges added to the complexity of his situation and further fueled speculation about his potential involvement in criminal activities. As the days turned into weeks and then months, the investigation progressed, and since he was never charged, Taylor's name slowly faded from the headlines, leaving many wondering about the truth behind his alleged connection to Young Dolph's murder. Unknown to all, his name and pictures would be splattered on newspapers and television screens in a few months' time. On November 10, 2022, a third key suspect, 43-year-old Hernandez Govan, was indicted for the murder of Young Dolph and the conspiracy to murder him. Govan, alleged to have ordered the hit on Young Dolph, added a new dimension to the case. The revelation of a potential mastermind behind the murder sent shockwaves through the community, raising questions about the motives and connections that led to this tragic event. The severity of the charges and the complexity of the case necessitated a thorough legal process. As a result, the trial for those accused of murdering Young Dolph is set to take place in 2024. The defendant's attorneys are engaged in extensive discovery procedures, ensuring that no stone is left unturned in their pursuit of justice. Amidst the legal proceedings, a key figure emerged in June 2023. Jamarcus Johnson, accused of aiding in the hideout and escape of Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith after the murder, made a shocking admission. He confessed to taking possession of a car from his half-brother, Justin Johnson, who was also one of the suspects. In a plea deal, Jamarcus Johnson pleaded guilty to three counts of accessory after the fact, with his conspiracy to murder charge dropped. His cooperation and expected testimony against the other suspects would prove crucial in the upcoming trials. Later in June 2023, another layer of complexity was added to the case when news broke of Taylor's death. The circumstances surrounding the incident only add to the intrigue. He was found shot to death inside a car in Orange Mound, Memphis. The investigation into Taylor's killing is ongoing, and although speculations have been flying left and right, the Memphis Police Department has remained tight-lipped about any potential links to Young Dolph's murder. Those who knew Taylor described him as a complex individual. While some only saw him as a person of interest, others knew him as a father, a friend, and a member of the community. His death has left loved ones devastated, especially his two children, who now face a life without their father. The death of Joshua Taylor has left the community in a state of shock and fear. Orange Mound, the neighborhood where Taylor was found shot to death, is now gripped by a sense of unease and uncertainty. Residents are on edge worried about who might be next and whether the violence will ever come to an end. Taylor's killing has reignited the fear of retaliation as the community grapples with the aftermath of Young Dolph's murder. The loss of two lives, both connected to the same high-profile case, has left loved ones devastated and the community in mourning. The impact of these tragedies is far-reaching, affecting not only the immediate families involved but also the wider community. The fear of retaliation is palpable, as many believe that the cycle of violence is far from over. The community is on high alert, with residents taking extra precautions precautions to ensure their safety. The loss of Joshua Taylor has only intensified these concerns, as people wonder who might be targeted next and when the violence will end. The impact of these events extends beyond the immediate community. The shockwaves are felt throughout Memphis and beyond, as the story captures national attention. The tragic deaths of Young Dolph and Joshua Taylor serve as a stark reminder of the ongoing violence plaguing the city and the urgent need for change. The loss of Joshua Taylor has left a void in the lives of his loved ones, especially his two children. 
They now face a future without their father, a future overshadowed by the violence that took his life. The devastating impact of gun violence on families and communities cannot be overstated, and it is a stark reality that many in Memphis face on a daily basis. As the investigation into Taylor's killing continues, the community remains hopeful that justice will be served. They yearn for answers and closure, desperate to put an end to the violence that has gripped their lives. Although Taylor's death means that the authorities may never know the full extent of his knowledge, the young Dolph case has carried on with the primary suspects drawing closer and closer to the most heated part of their legal journey to either prove their innocence or receive a guilty sentence. The legal journey ahead promises to be arduous and filled with twists and turns. The trial of those accused of murdering young Dolph will not only seek justice for the victim but also shed light on the dark underbelly of the music industry. The murder of young Dolph sent shockwaves through the community, raising questions about the safety and security of artists in an industry known for its glamour and allure. As the legal proceedings surrounding the murder of young Dolph unfold, the anticipation for the upcoming trials continues to grow. The severity of the charges and the intricate web of events surrounding the case have set the stage for a trial that will captivate the nation. Due to the complexity of the charges and the extensive discovery procedures undertaken by the defendant's attorneys, the trial for those accused of murdering young Dolph is set to take place in 2024. The delay in the trial date reflects the gravity of the situation and the meticulous approach taken to ensure a fair and thorough examination of the evidence. The impact of Young Dolph's murder reverberates far beyond the courtroom. It serves as a stark reminder of the dangers faced by artists and the consequences of the violence that can permeate their lives. The tragedy has prompted soul-searching within the music industry, with artists, fans, and industry professionals grappling with the need for increased security measures and a renewed commitment to the safety and well-being of artists. Young Dolph's untimely death has left a void in the music world, known for his unique style and unapologetic apologetic lyrics, he was a rising star on the cusp of even greater success. His murder serves as a somber reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating impact of violence. As the trials approach, the world waits with bated breath for justice to be served. The courtroom will become the stage for a legal battle that will shape the narrative surrounding Young Dolph's murder. The outcome of the trials will not only provide closure for the victim's family, but also send a powerful message about the consequences of such heinous acts. The murder of Young Dolph has forever altered the music industry forcing a collective reckoning with the realities of fame and the need for increased security measures. It serves as a reminder that behind the glitz and glamour lies a world fraught with danger and uncertainty. To get a proper grasp on what to expect during the court proceedings, it's important to examine the circumstances of young Dolph's death and the new pieces of information that have surfaced in recent times. Who killed young Dolph? The Memphis police chief is asking everyone to stay home tonight after rapper Young Dolph is gunned down and killed at a South Memphis cookie shop. Young Dolph, whose real name was Adolph Robert Thornton Jr., was born on July 27, 1985, in Chicago, Illinois. However, his journey truly began when he moved to Memphis, Tennessee at a young age. Raised by his grandmother, Young Dolph faced numerous challenges and obstacles that would shape his future. Growing up in Memphis was not easy for Young Dolph. The city was known for its high crime rates and poverty-stricken neighborhoods. As a result, he was exposed to the harsh realities of life from an early age. Despite the difficult circumstances, young Dolph's grandmother provided him with a stable and loving home, instilling in him the values of hard work and perseverance. Young Dolph attended Hamilton High School, where he was known for his charismatic personality and love for music. It was during his high school years that he discovered his passion for rap and began writing his own lyrics. Music became an outlet for him to express his thoughts and emotions, allowing him to escape the challenges of his surroundings. However, as Young Dolph entered his teenage years, he found himself in need of income. With limited job opportunities available, he turned to the streets to make ends meet. Engaging in illegal activities became a means of survival for him as he navigated the dangerous world of drugs and crime. Despite the allure of fast money, Young Dolph knew deep down that this was not the path he wanted to follow. He saw firsthand the devastating effects of the streets on his community and the lives of those around him. Determined to break free from this cycle, he turned to music as his salvation. Young Young Dolph's early experiences in Memphis shaped his perspective and fueled his drive to succeed. He witnessed the struggles and hardships faced by his friends and neighbors, and he knew that he wanted to make a difference. Music became his outlet for self-expression and a way to shed light on the realities of life in Memphis. In 2008, Young Dolph took a leap of faith and released his first mixtape, Paper Root Campaign. This project showcased his raw talent and unique style, catching the attention of 
of local audiences. The mixtape served as a stepping stone for his career, paving the way for future success. After the release of his debut mixtape, Paper Route Campaign, in 2008, Young Dolph's music began to gain traction in the streets of Memphis. The mixtape showcased his raw talent and unique style, capturing the attention of local audiences. This early success fueled his ambition and set the stage for his future endeavors. In 2010, Young Dolph took a significant step in his career by establishing his own independent label, Paper Root Empire. This move allowed him to have full creative control over his music and paved the way for his rise in the industry. With his label, Young Dolph released a series of mixtapes that showcased his growth as an artist and solidified his place in the rap scene. One of his notable early mixtapes was Welcome to Dolph World, released in the same year as the establishment of Paper Root Empire. This mixtape showcased Young Dolph's ability to captivate listeners with his catchy hooks and hard-hitting lyrics. It was a testament to his determination and talent, garnering attention from both fans and industry insiders. As Young Dolph continued to release music, he caught the attention of established artists in the industry. Collaborations with artists like Gucci Mane and Pee Wee Longway further elevated his profile and expanded his reach. These collaborations allowed Young Dolph to showcase his versatility as an artist and solidify his position as a rising star. In 2015, Young Dolph gained mainstream attention with his guest appearance on OT Genesis' single Cut It. The song became a massive hit, reaching the top 40 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. This collaboration exposed Young Dolph to a wider audience and solidified his status as a rising star in the industry. Building on the success of Cut It, Young Dolph released his debut studio album, King of Memphis, in 2016. The album received critical acclaim and further established his presence in the rap scene. With tracks like Get Paid and Facts, Young Dolph showcased his lyrical prowess and ability to craft infectious hooks. Following the success of his debut album, Young Dolph continued to release a string of successful projects. His mixtapes, such as Gelato and Bulletproof, showcased his consistency and ability to deliver hard-hitting tracks. These projects resonated with audiences as Young Dolph rapped about his experiences growing up in the streets of Memphis and the struggles he faced along the way. Despite his growing success, Young Dolph faced numerous challenges along the way. In 2017, he found himself embroiled in a feud with fellow Memphis rapper Yo Gotti. This feud escalated to a dangerous level when Young Dolph released a diss track titled Play With Yo B the track ignited tensions between the two artists and led to a shooting incident in Charlotte, North Carolina. Miraculously, Young Dolph survived the incident, but it served as a stark reminder of the dangers that came with his newfound fame. Despite the challenges and controversies, Young Dolph remained resilient and focused on his music. In 2020, he considered retiring from the industry to prioritize spending time with his children. However, his passion for creating music proved too strong to resist. He released his seventh album, Rich Slave, which became his highest charting album to date, reaching number four on the Billboard 200. Beyond his music career, Young Dolph's personal life and philanthropic endeavors showcased his commitment to making a positive impact on his community. Despite the challenges he faced, he remained dedicated to his family and used his success to uplift those around him. Family was always a priority for Young Dolph. Despite his demanding career, he made it a point to spend quality time with his children and be present in their lives. He often spoke about the importance of being a positive role model for his kids and instilling in them the values of hard work and perseverance. Young Dolph's love for his children was evident in his music. He often referenced them in his lyrics, sharing his hopes and dreams for their future. His desire to provide a better life for his family served as a driving force behind his success. In 2020, Young Dolph considered retiring from the music industry to prioritize spending time with his children. However, his passion for creating music proved too strong to resist. He released his seventh album, Rich Slave, which became his highest charting album to date. This decision showcased his dedication to his craft while still maintaining a balance between his career and personal life. Young Dolph's success in the music industry allowed him to give back to his community in meaningful ways. He used his platform to shed light on the struggles faced by those in underserved neighborhoods and to advocate for change. Through his music, he addressed social issues and shared his own experiences growing up in Memphis. In addition to his music, Young Dolph organized events and initiatives to support local businesses and provide opportunities for aspiring artists. He understood the importance of investing in the next generation and empowering them to pursue their dreams. His philanthropic efforts aim to create a positive impact and uplift those who face similar challenges to his own. Young Dolph's commitment to philanthropy extended beyond his own community. He often donated to charitable organizations and supported causes that aligned with his values. His generosity and willingness to give back showcased his compassion and desire to make a difference in the lives of others. Tragically, on November 17th, 2021, Young Dolph's life was cut short. It was a crisp November day in Memphis, Tennessee, as the city went about its usual hustle and bustle 
Russell, but little did anyone know that this day would forever be etched in the annals of music history. At the time, Young Dolph had gained popularity in the rap industry for his gritty lyrics and unapologetic style. He had made a name for himself with his raw talent and authentic storytelling, capturing the hearts of fans around the world. Young Dolph had returned to his hometown, seeking solace in the familiar streets that had shaped him. One of his regular stops was Makeda's Homemade Butter Cookies, a bakery that held a special place in his heart. It was a place where he could indulge in the simple pleasures of life, surrounded by the sweet aroma of freshly baked treats. On that fateful day, Young Dolph stepped into Makeda's with a smile on his face, unaware of the danger that lurked in the shadows. As he made his way through the bakery, exchanging warm greetings with the staff, two gunmen patiently waited for their moment to strike. Outside, in a white two-door Mercedes-Benz parked nearby, the two gunmen meticulously planned their attack. They knew Young Dolph's routine, his love for Makeda's, and they saw this as an opportunity to silence a rising star. Inside the bakery, Young Dolph perused the display of delectable treats, his mind filled with thoughts of his next musical endeavor. Little did he know that his life was about to take a tragic turn. Suddenly, the door swung open, and the two gunmen emerged from the Mercedes-Benz, their faces masked by a sinister determination. They had one goal in mind, to eliminate Young Dolph. The atmosphere inside the bakery shifted as the gunmen entered, their presence sending a chill down the spines of those present. Panic and confusion filled the air, but Young Dolph remained oblivious to the impending danger. And then, in a split second, chaos erupted. The gunmen unleashed a hail of bullets, their shots echoing through the bakery. The sound of shattering glass and terrified screams filled the air as the patrons and staff scrambled for cover. Young Dolph, caught in the crossfire, was struck multiple times by the bullets. The pain seared through his body as he fought to stay conscious, his life hanging in the balance. With their mission accomplished, the gunmen swiftly retreated, leaving behind a scene of devastation and shattered dreams. They vanished into the streets of Memphis, their identities concealed, leaving the city in shock and mourning. The police arrived on the scene within minutes, their sirens piercing the air. They secured the area, ensuring the safety of those still inside the bakery, and began their investigation into this heinous crime. Paramedics rushed to Young Dolph's side, desperately trying to save his life. But the damage was extensive, the wounds too severe. Despite their best efforts, it became clear that this was a battle Young Dolph could not win. The city of Memphis held its breath, praying for a miracle, hoping against hope that their beloved rapper would pull through. News of the shooting spread like wildfire, and within moments, Crowds of hundreds of people swarmed the area. Emotions ran high as grief and anger mingled in the air. The community, united in their love for young Dolph, demanded justice. The police worked tirelessly to maintain order, preventing individuals from entering the crime scene while they conducted their investigation. Their presence was a reminder that this act of violence would not go unanswered. Tennessee House Representative London Lamar and Memphis Councilman J.B. Smiley were among the first to react to this tragedy. Recognizing the potential for civil unrest and violence, they called for a curfew in Memphis, urging the community to come together and mourn the loss of a beloved figure peacefully. As the news of young Dolph's shooting spread, the hearts of his family and friends were heavy with fear and anguish. They clung to each other, praying for a miracle, desperately hoping that their beloved son, brother, and friend would survive. But their worst fears were realized when authorities delivered the devastating news. Young Dolph had succumbed to his injuries, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. The city of Memphis was plunged into mourning, disbelief hanging heavy in the air. The loss of Young Dolph was not just a blow to the music industry, but to the community that had embraced him as one of their own. In the days that followed, preparations were made to bid farewell to Young Dolph. The city rallied around his family, offering support and solace in their time of grief. The funeral would be a testament to the impact he had on the lives of of those around him. On Tuesday, November 30th, 2021, a somber service was held at First Baptist Church, Broad Street. The church became a sanctuary of shared sorrow as mourners gathered to pay their final respects. The funeral procession made its way through the streets of Memphis, a solemn caravan of black SUVs escorted by security and the Memphis police. The city stood still, paying tribute to a life extinguished too soon. Young Dolph's final resting place was across from Hamilton High School, his alma mater. It was a poignant reminder of the journey he had taken. From the halls of of education to the stages of stardom. In a gesture of remembrance and honor, the city of Memphis approved the renaming of a street in Young Dolph's honor. Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Avenue now stands as a testament to the impact he had on his community, a lasting tribute to a life that touched so many. In February 2022, two Tennessee lawmakers, Representative Tory C. Harris and former Senator Katrina Robinson, proposed a bill to establish November 17th as the Adolph Thornton Day of Service. The bill aims to celebrate Young Dolph's memory, music, and 
community service contributions, encouraging Tennesseans to follow in his footsteps and lend a helping hand to those in need. The death of young Dolph shook the world, leaving behind a void that can never be filled. But his legacy lives on, inspiring countless artists. To this day, the world continues to watch with bated breath to see his killers be brought to justice. Check out this next video to learn more about the underbelly of the rap industry.